Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. This is the week of June 27th, 2022. And this week we've got five stories. The first one is DJI Avada, uh, this drone that we've talked about for a while. Well, we have some more renderings, or potential renderings, I should say. We'll talk about influential drones that acquires Buzz My Property. We'll talk about uh, Phoenix Fire that uses drones to rescue hikers uh, down in the Phoenix area. And that was not the smartest thing. Uh, we'll talk about an upcoming AAAC meeting. And if you don't know what AAAC AAC is, we'll talk about it. And then finally, a Pilot Institute update. We got two things we want to share. So let's get to it. First thing this week, and, and first off, I have to say this week is uh, a little bit of a slow news week, and it happens every once in a while. So uh, we, we try to find uh, uh, topics that we thought you would be interested in. But we talked about the DJI Avada, which is a, a drone that uh, people think is around the horizon from DJI. Now, it showed up on some of the DJI uh, code and inside of the, the website, which is a pretty good indication that this drone is going to happen. Uh, the a new video shows a potential concept of what it looked like. Now it's important to note that the video was not made by DJI. This is more of a of an artist rendering, so you take it for face value. But uh, we're hoping to see this uh, according to the previous leaks and and some of the information. It looks like it might be uh, on the roadmap for July of this year, which is right around the corner. So we'll put a link down in the description to uh, Drone Excel's uh, article on this, and then you can uh, see if this is something that you might be interested in. Next story this week is Influential Drones is uh, has announced that they're going to acquire Buzz My Property. Uh, this is uh, Buzz My Property is a real estate drone service for realtors, landscapers, arborists, and municipal departments. Uh, Influential Drone is a drone reseller and commercial uh, drone service provider. We actually do a lot of work with uh, them, and and Dave, who's the owner of Influential Drone, does also a lot of work with us at the FAA. So uh, we uh, we wish them uh, good luck with this endeavor, and this is kind of exciting to see this happening uh, to them. Next story this week is uh, Phoenix Fire uses drones to rescue eight people that were uh, caught on Camelback Mountain in Phoenix. Now, uh, if you're not familiar with Phoenix temperatures this time of year, uh, it's uh, it's not a place to be without water or without protection. As a matter of fact, probably not a good place to be just during the day. In general, uh, the group was filming actually for a, uh, a TV show of some sort, a reality TV show, and then they ran out of water, uh, they called 911, and then Fe Phoenix Fire, actually used drones after they were dispatched to uh, find a group of hikers and then they had them airlifted off the mountain. Uh, this is a pretty, unfortunately, pretty common thing that happens down in Camelback uh, this time of year. So please be careful if you are a visitor in this area, in this part of the country, uh, things get hot, extremely, extremely hot. Uh, we were, uh, we, as you know, we are in Arizona, we're higher up in elevation, we're at 5,000 feet. So uh, we don't get these types of temperatures, but we drove uh, to go to a flight fest that we just came back from, and uh, the temperatures were uh, in the high 110 degrees. So uh, just, just be careful, all right? Next thing this week is the AAAC meeting. Now you may wonder what the AAAC meeting, uh, it's the new version or the new name for the Drone Advisory Committee. And the Drone Advisory Committee is this group of um, industry professionals that meet with the FA to provide them guidance on specific topics. Uh, Vic Moss from uh, from the Drone Service Provider Alliance is going to be at the meeting and uh, they're going to be talking about this on June 30th, which is going to be the day that this video goes live. And the topics are going to be uh, interesting. The first one is to discuss UAS operator safety. And I want to big, give a big kudos to Vic uh, because he has been, uh, I'm not going to say harassing uh, the FAA folks, but he's really been pushing for this to become a topic. Uh, as you know, uh, people are getting harassed as they fly their drones. Uh, drones get shot from the sky. And Vic and the Drone Service Provider Alliance have been keeping track of all these things. and. Uh, and they want to bring up this topic. Uh, we've been very, very vocal at Pilot Institute about uh, the location of the pilot uh, being shared with Remote ID, which is going to create issues. And um, and, and we want to make sure the FAA is aware of this. Uh, and, and I think this is going to be the topic of discussion. So uh, other topics are going to be uh, talking about the remaining items for the 2018 uh, Reauthorization Act. As you know, there's still one item uh, from the FAA uh, that the FAA has to complete 
case in order to uh, well get everything for 44809, which is a regulation for flying for uh, recreational purposes, and that's to get. Um, CBOs, community-based organizations, recognized. And uh, so hopefully we get some answers as to how far we are in this process. Uh, it's been going on for obviously four years, the 2018 Reauthorization Act, and um, and the FAA is unfortunately not done with this process. So uh, I think it will be a big relief for everyone once this is out. Uh, there's also uh, a discussion, there's going to be a discussion on the FAA rulemaking process. And then the last one kind of buggle my mind a little bit, which is a discussion on operations of UAS in Class E airspace over the top of Class Alpha airspace. If you're familiar with Class Alpha airspace, starts at 18,000 feet and goes all the way to 60,000 feet. And uh, they're talking about operating UAS on top of that. So I think the, uh, the population that's going to be affected by uh, these type of operation is rather small, but uh, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of this topic. And the last story this week is a quick update on Python Institute. We just released another course. So uh, two weeks ago, we released our photography and videography course. Uh, thanks to all of you that signed up. Uh, if you want more information, we'll put a link in the description. But uh, we also just released a course on visual observers and how to train visual observers. Uh, this is something that we've had on our roadmap for a while. And people have been asking about this. Hey, I get a new visual observer, I need to train them. How do I do this? So uh, we created an hour and a half, it's actually an hour and 45 minutes of content of how and what you should do as a good visual observer. So uh, we'll put a link in the, again in the description down here. And then the last thing at Python Institute is we are celebrating one year of uh, trust. Now this is uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the date at which the FA uh, released the trust uh, certificate to the, uh, to the world or to the United States at least. Uh, since then, we've issued uh, 72,000 trust certificates. Uh, number one trust provider, thanks to you guys. Uh, this is 25% uh, of all FAA certificates for trust uh, came from Pirate Institute this year. So uh, we want to thank you for your support. I know a lot of you recommend us and we uh, truly appreciate it. Uh, this is uh, something that we do for the FAA for free. And we want to reiterate this. You do not pay for trust. This is, uh, you, you go on the website, you take trust, and um, and then and then you basically uh, good to go. It's a one time deal. It takes about thirty minutes, and it's something that you can't fail. But you have to do it if you're flying for uh, recreational purposes. So uh, that's it. That's all I have for you this week. Uh, I'm a little bit under the weather, so if you're asking why my voice is not very loud, I'm still trying to recover from being sick for a couple of days. Uh, but uh, hopefully, we'll be uh, feeling better in the next couple of days. And uh, that's it. I'll see you guys next week. Mm -hmm.